Eric Darling here with Darling Data, trying to talk in a way that, uh, that would be really easy to train the AI off of. Uh, hopefully, hopefully someday I will be AI training worthy. Training AI worthy? I don't know. Whatever, whatever they call it when AI steals your stuff, I guess. Uh, and in today's video, we're going to talk about how bad cardinality estimates can make locking situations worse in SQL Server. All right. So, hope you're ready. Uh, I realized uh, that I don't have a, nice, a good affectionate name uh, for all my, my viewers out there, my watchers. Maybe, maybe watchers is the right word. All 3,562 of you as of the recording of this video. Uh, who knows? Maybe that maybe that'll go up while while, while I'm recording. You never can tell. Uh, I don't want to call you my data darlings. That might get me in trouble with the misses, and uh, I don't want to call you data heads because <laughs> sounds like I'm about to say something a little bit more rude. So we're gonna I'm gonna I don't know. I'm gonna have to think about that. If you if you have a good idea, uh, leave a comment because I, I would love to would love to know how would you how, what, how you would like me to refer to you. I can't possibly learn all your names, so uh, we're gonna ha we're gonna have to come to some sort of group descriptor. But anyway, uh, I've got this <clears throat> lovely index on the post table, and uh, you know it's it's good good enough to prove a point, right? It's not not anything overly fancy. As soon as you get too fancy in demos, they start failing, and people start staring at you like you're an idiot. Uh, and what I want to show you is, well, how bad cardinality can make locking worse in SQL Server. So uh, this, is a, this is an easy one for SQL Server, right? This query right in here, very easy. Uh, we're going to run this and we're going to roll it back immediately because we don't need to keep any of these changes. And uh, I'm going to run this update in the transaction. Within the transaction, I'm going to uh, select data out of my little helper function there called What's Up Locks. It's available at my GitHub repo. Um, somewhere, uh, and what this is going to do is show us all the locks that were taken by this update. All right, so we go and we run this. Lo and behold, it runs pretty quickly, and if we zoom in over here, let me frame that up real nice for everyone at home. Uh, we see this request mode column right here, but notice only one of these rows has an X by it in itself. Right? That, that means this is, this is the thing that actually took the locks. And the thing that actually took the locks was on uh, 167 keys. All right? So that's, that's pretty easy. It's pretty low, pretty lightweight. All right? It's a serviceable number of locks. Uh, this thing finished pretty quickly. We didn't have to worry too much about anything at all. all right? pretty, pretty okay in here. All right? And um, let's go back to the query plan real quick. SQL Server. Started with a seek over here and uh, started with a very good cardinality estimate of 167. Now, the, the thing that uh, is, is important to note here is that um, when you start with a seek, you are most likely going to start with key locks. You start with a scan, you are most likely going to start with page locks. Uh, if you, uh, I don't know. I don't think you can really start with much of it, unless, you, unless you're using a, a heap or something, but rid locks, maybe. Get some rid locks in your life. And uh, so, uh, the sort of generalized sort of advice there. Like the storage engine sees, seeks low number of keys, says, hey, uh, key locks. Uh, storage engine sees lots of page locks, and it's like, ah, page, cool. Uh, and then from row or page, you might move up to an object level lock, which we'll see in a minute. But you will not go from row to page to object. You just go from row or page to object, assuming that SQL Server uh, finds valid reason to engage in an, an attempt at lock escalation and uh, is successful. If there are any competing locks on the table, it may not be successful. Now, <coughs> excuse me. The thing that almost no one, uh, thing that well, let's see. What's a good way to put this? I think that almost everyone takes for granted is that their end users are not walking data dictionaries. They do not have numerical meanings for different things printed out at their desk. We're going to just look stuff up to make your job easier. 
Post type ID equals three isn't going to mean much to anyone at home. No one's going to memorize all the different post types in the post post types table. It's just not, not a thing that they're going to do. So what they do know, usually, is the type of post that they want to find. It could be question, could be answer. For the sake of this dem demonstration, we're going to be looking for wiki posts because those hit a relatively small number of rows. Posts and questions are like most of the table. <laughs> All the other things are the rest of the table, but like there's 17 million rows in the post table, like 6 million are, are questions, like 11 million are answers, and there's like a few hundred thousand of the other stuff. But look what happens with this query. This is a real gosh darn shame. What happens here? This is not a very quick finishing query at all, is it? Not at all. It's just four seconds. Right? Well, actually, how long did that take? Well, it was 87 milliseconds. What's your problem? <laughs> What's your gosh darn problem? Right? 1.8 seconds in here doing all this stuff. And, of course, 1.8 seconds over here. Notice that we did not use our nice narrow little index that we created on the post table on the post type ID column. We ignored it. SQL Server says, no, I'm not using that index because I don't want to do key lookups. If you want me to use this index, you have to put the column that you're updating in the index. <laughs> Good luck with that later. Um, <clears throat> we'll see how that goes. Uh, but the, the, the reason why SQL Server doesn't use it is because SQL Server makes a real crappy guess at cardinality, right? If you kind of look a little bit clo more closely about what happens in this query plan, uh, this di parallel distribute streams uses a partitioning type of broadcast. What broadcast means is that this one row gets sent out to eight threads because we're running at max stop eight, right? We get one row from here. Uh, this thing turns that one row into eight copies of one row. And then when we come down here in the clustered index, uh, we have some, uh, let me get both of these things open so you can see a little bit better. There we go. We have uh, eight threads in here that act cooperatively to scan all 17 million rows, right? These numbers in here will add up to 17 million. And then up in this section, we have the actual number of rows that got produced by each of those threads after that post type ID filter was applied. So, you know, there's I mean, a, a decent spread here. Nothing's, nothing's too, too off. I guess the 11 is a little bit low, but 30, 11, 19, this will add up to the 175 rows that we get here. So, all well and good. And then uh, when we finally do our join over here, that gets whittled down to 167 rows, right? So, a lot of extra work. And what's, what's kind of funny is that even if we... Uh, tell SQL Server to use our index, right? If we say SQL Server, we created an index. It's perfectly usable. You're being a goofball. Use our index. Uh, we, we still get, well, actually, I, you know, I should, should repeat myself, but if you were paying close attention to the, the, the output of this from the first demo, this does indeed lock the entire table, right? So uh, we get still over here, a rather poor cardinality estimate down here. 167 of 2142770. So uh, that's a seven digit number. So it thinks 2.1 million rows uh, are going to get hit over here. So we don't use it. And of course, when SQL, when SQL server is like, holy cow, that's a lot of, that's a lot of locks. It, 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 it escalates those up to the object. And I'm just going to, just to, just to make sure that you don't think I'm being goofy here. I'm going to, that, that query did run a lot faster. It still took a lot of locks though. Uh, if we rerun this, this is the one that takes about two seconds or so, I guess. D This one also locks the entire object. We have this X locked. Let X lock at the object level. We lock the whole gosh darn thing. So, in practice, a lot of people will experiment with joins with modifications, and that's not maybe so great. Um, exists tends to work a bit better unless you need to like join a table to another table to update the columns in one table to the columns in another table, then exist does you no good. But like in this case, we could use exist. Maybe it would turn out a little bit better, but that's usually not the way most people are going to write that query the first time. Now, going back to our users not being data dictionaries, right? 
what we're going to do is we're going to create a store. I'm going to say an incredibly realistic store procedure. It's like uncanny valley levels of realism uh, for this store procedure where we're going to ask our users to supply a post type. We're going to look that post type up for them. And then we are going to up, do an update based on the post type that we find, the post type ID that we find for them, right? So let's create this store procedure. Let's make sure we have this created because there's another copy of that that um, has a little fix for it. So uh, if we run this, and it's going to do roughly the same thing as all the other ones, what do we get? We get this big honking object level lock with the local variable in effect. The reason why is because SQL Server makes terrible guesses when we use local variables. Womp and womp. 167 out of 2.1 million. And again, we are not using our nice narrow non-clustered index. We are using our big honking clustered index. Right? SQL Server has said no. No to the no to the no, no to the non-clustered index. Yes to the clustered index. And SQL Server is once again once once. <laughs> ah, it's a good time. One thing. Uh, <laughs> yeah, where'd that come from? Uh, one thing again, <laughs> asking for uh, an index that uh, not only leads with uh, our post type ID column, but also includes the column we are we are attempting to update, which is maybe not the greatest, the grandest of ideas. So, of course, you know, local variables cause all sorts of problems. Uh, you may run into cardinality estimation issues for all sorts of other reasons. But local variables are just a very easy and convenient way to show you how crappy cardinality can get uh, when you use them. Of course, there's a very easy fix for this, right? And if, what we're going to do is just create or alter our store procedure. And we're just going to stick an option recompile at the end, right? And I just want to show you the difference here. It's not really... Uh, not really anything incredibly groundbreaking. It's, yeah, local variables, option recompile. That's like the first step in the decision tree. <laughs> like, figure out how bad this thing is. Just run and do that. All right, so if we run this, um, what we'll see is the same behavior as uh, the, when we used a uh, inlined literal value where we have the 167 uh, exclusive locks, 100, sorry, sorry, 167 exclusive key locks here, and then, uh, you know, some other intent exclusive locks and other places that don't really do anything because we, they don't actually take the locks. They, the only one that actually takes the locks is the one that has X by it. So when you're writing modification queries, be very, very careful. Make sure that they have good, make sure that you have good indexes in place so that your queries can find the data they're looking for to modify. Um, uh, if you find yourself needing to use local variables, um, some, some ways to fix problems with them are, of course, uh, option recompile hints, uh, using parameterized dynamic SQL or an inner store procedure call to a store procedure that will actually do the update uh, because those will treat whatever local variable you create outside of them is a parameter when you pass it into them. If you're using table variables uh, for whatever reason, you know, um, <laughs> they're in memory only, right? Uh, just try using a temp table instead. Uh, usually get better cardinality estimates. Table variables don't get any sort of local histogram to the data that shows the data distributions in there. And that can cause some pretty big problems when you start joining them off to other tables. Uh, if you have, I don't know, poorly written queries, overly complex join and where clauses, maybe uh, out of date stats. You can you can hire you can hire me to do most of that stuff. Um, I'll, I'll even I'll even update statistics for you if you if you if you feel like you need me to. Uh, one thing that is sometimes good to mess with it wouldn't would it, like I, I tried it every which way in this demo, but um, <clears throat> sometimes changing the cardinal cardinality estimation model for your queries can be useful. Uh, you have the new one and the legacy one. I have a strong preference for the legacy cardinality estimator for most of the things that I do. Um, a lot of the demos that I write are using the new cardinality estimator where things just, um, uh, you know, fly off the rails in a lot of ways. Uh, then there are other things that you might be doing in your queries that the, uh, the optimizer does not reason terribly well with. Um, if you have scalar valued functions in a where clause or a join predicate, or if you have multi-statement uh, table valued functions with the return a table variable, uh, you're cross applying or joining to those. Uh, you can hire me to rewrite those because I do that for fun, money, 
I do that for, for money so I can have fun. Keep, uh, and of course, if you are in the, in the midst of a modification query, if you are shredding XML or JSON and uh, attempting to use um, some sort of join or where predicate or I, some sort of isolating predicate, uh, you can also hire me to, to fix that because I do that sort of stuff also for money fun. So anyway, um, <clears throat> we've learned today that poor cardinality estimates can lead to more uh, intrusive locking. Don't let the intrusive locking win. Uh, fix your queries so that when you modify data, you take as few locks as possible. You don't try to escalate those locks all the time. And then you cause all sorts of blocking and deadlocking issues. Of course, if you have all sorts of blocking and deadlocking issues, you can, you can also hire me for, with money to fix that so I can have fun doing this. All right, good deal, all right? Anyway, uh, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed yourselves. I hope you learned something. I hope you'll hire me. Uh, <laughs> I don't know why I'm pushing that so hard. In this. I don't know. It's like I have vacation coming up. The more people who hire me, the harder it is to take vacation. Uh, um, if you like this video, uh, thumbs ups are nice. Uh, just make sure that you, you, you put them, some, you, you thumbs up somewhere appropriate. Uh, c nice comments are nice. Do like those. Um, kissy face emojis, always a winner. Uh, and if you like this sort of SQL Server content, you can subscribe to my channel so that, hold on, let's drum, drum roll this, so that you can join nearly 3,563 other lucky people who get notified when these videos are published. Um, so, yeah, that's all that. Anyway, uh, I'm going to go work. Because fun is over. I've had my, my designated playtime. I've got, got my yard time today. So now, now it's time to go back to work. Uh, thank you for watching.